Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. It's episode number four, and today we're returning with Into Milan in the Tim Cup first round and in a massive game at the bottom of the table as we face Sampdoria away. Before we get to the games though, shout out Brescia for getting on off camera. And there's also been a big sale from Brescia. Well, I say a big sale, a sale from Brescia, which uh, I was showing just a moment's time. So the January transfer window is now open. And of course, in the last episode, you saw our 3 1 loss away at Fiorentina, and of course, the 2 2 draw at home to bottom place, Lecce. Uh, two games off camera, but as you can see, we responded with just our third win in this Serie A this season in a crazy five goal thriller at uh, home to Parma. This is an amazing game, man. Balotelli gave us the lead 22 minutes in, heading in a corner uh, before Javinho made it 1 one to put Palmer back on level turns right before the break. In the second half, we conceded again. A shot from range going to the bottom corner, and I thought, okay, here we go. Palmer going to win this one, and uh, it's going to be another loss for us. But instead, Balotelli scored his second of the game with 12 minutes to go, made it 2-2, as we are holding on to the point, clinging on to a draw. In stoppage time, there was a VAR incident uh, to determine whether it was a free kick or a penalty. The referee awarded a free kick, but from that, despite it was cleared, we kept the chance alive, and Sandro Tonali, vice captain, ordinarily our captain on the pitch made it 3-2 and won us the game in the 94th minute oh man Sandro please don't leave us man we can't afford to lose you but Tonali won it for us I was absolutely buzzing running up down the touchline Mourinho style 3-2 and uh, our third Serie A win the season but following that first game of 2020 and we lost away against Bologna by a goal so no, this is a really disappointing game man I said before we're expected to lose almost every single game but these are the sort of matches where we should be targeting a point Bologna went down to 10 men inside the first half of the first half and three minutes later they took the lead through Riccardo Orsolini Roma legend from my FIFA 20 career mode and despite hitting the woodwork late on in the game we just we just couldn't find that leveler and it was a really big slip up because we should have at least got a point there against a side with 10 men but instead did taste defeat to start the calendar year off so as you can see on the back of that loss there we are still outside the relegation zone but Bologna now go eight points ahead of us they look as if they're going to pull away from the relegation dogfight right now but we are still above the drop zone on the head-to-head -head ruling against Cagliari. Lecce, I hate to say it, but they're definitely going to, go, are going to finish rock bottom and uh, set the worst points record in Serie A history. Only four for the campaign. And one of those four, of course, came against us. Genoa, thankfully, are also having a really poor season right now. But Cagliari are the team that have got a good chance of overtaking us and putting us back in the bottom three. For now, though, we stay outside the relegation zone, but for how much longer? And as you can see, there has indeed been a sale from Brescia as well. Uh, once again, we loaned out Simon Scrav, who came back from his first loan spell at AIAK. And now he's gone to Malmo for, I believe, is that a calendar year? Is that a calendar year he's gone for or just six months? Can't remember now. Um, yeah, it is a calendar year. He's, uh, he's gone to Sweden there to play for Malmo, so they'll be paying his wages. And as you can see, uh, a big sale arranged in January. Jesse Joranen, our Finnish goalkeeper that was signed in real life by pressure for 4.3 mil. We make a 2.5 mil loss in just six months. It's no wonder that the board weren't happy about it. But at the end of the day, I said this before, basically any sort of money we can get for our foreign players, I'll take it. I would have taken 1 million for the guy because he's not going to play for the, uh, play for us. His valuation is going to continue to drop. He was on like 15 grand a week. So yeah, it's a 2.5 mil loss. But again, it's better than nothing, right? And watching his valuation decrease month by month. So yep, yes, the running goes and that gets his salary off the books too. And uh, one of our only remaining foreign players has left. We're still trying to sell and dodge. Uh, interestingly enough, I have negotiated a bit with uh, Benevento for just 725 grand. Once again, it'll be a massive undersell for him. But again, we can't use him. So anything, is uh, is good enough for me and that will mean that the last player that we left will be John Chancellor at the moment I just can't get any interest for whatsoever anyway first of the two games today it is the TM Cup uh, sorry Tim Cup first round as we take on Inter Milan we've already got past the board expected us to get to so whatever happens I'm not fussed and with Sampdoria coming on Sunday evening we're going to field a week inside for the game wave the white flag and hope we just don't get hammered so it's going to be 5-3-2 uh, slash 3-5-2 for the game uh, some of you guys have been saying why don't you push your wing backs further forward a little bit as opposed to having them as full backs but in wing back roles that's exactly what I've done I've pushed them up to wing backs right now and to be fair we have looked good when coming forward down the flanks now they've given a bit more freedom and uh, pushed up a little bit higher so this is our team Alfonso in goal back three slash five is Magri Mangravati Gastelillo uh, Semprini and Romulo uh, midfield trio Marazzi Desena and Luis Ignoli with Ravaglia and Rocco the kids up top and on the bench and Danacci Sistana Pirola Armini Martella Sibeli Bissoli Tonali Gezi Balotelli Telly, Donnarumma and Tori Grosser as well. We can line up for the game because the Sampdoria one is far more important. First game, pretty sure we'll get battered, but you never know. Forza Brescia. 
aesthetically as well, I quite like how this system looks. It's like there's a, an oval shape between defence and midfield. It's, it's, it's quite nicely linked, if that makes sense. The, to us, it might be aesthetically pleasing on the eye at the moment. The uh, tactical... I, I guess errors I'll be making all season long are probably going to be uh, continuing. Uh, in to go 1-0 up with Sony from the free kick and already down. Fucking hell. <laughs> what did I say a moment ago? You never know. Yes, we bloody do know. We've got absolutely no chance in this one. But uh, again, it, it's all about managing the situation. You know, we've got absolutely no chance regardless of what team we pick in this game. But with Sampdoria on Sunday, well, we have been playing well of lately and picking up some points. If we can get a win there, I don't care, man. This could be a cricket score in this one. This could be 10-0, double digits. I don't care. With Sampdoria on Sunday, get a point in that game and I'll be I'll be fine no matter what the scoreline is today. In for a long one, I think. In for a long one. Baragi makes it 2-0. Likelihood is this will be a cricket score. If this is single digits, are we shocked? Positive signs, that's what we're after. But if we go three goals down inside the first seven minutes, there'll be nothing positive about that. The Ambrosio plays it back to Sensai. And the cross might find Baragi, which it does. And Sanchez makes it three. Yep, odds, I would say, are probably even on whether they score ten or more today. I think Inter are sort of taking pity on us now. They've scored their early three goals. Now just knocking the ball around. 70% possession. It's like a training exercise. Free kick whipped in and almost a carbon copy of the first goal. This time De Vrij gets on the end. 4-0. Trust the process. Fine, man. Seriously. Thrash us. I don't really care. I really don't care. It doesn't bother me one bit, man. I'm already thinking about season two. I know we're outside the relegation zone right now, but I still predict we are going to finish in the bottom three. And I'm already thinking about our season in the Serie B and where we can bounce back instantaneously or whether it will take two or more seasons to get out. Regardless of the case, man, I, I, I don't mind. I'm thinking long term here. Whatever happens this year, I'm not bothered. Baragi's cross, nodded down by Martinez, and Alexis Sanchez gets his fifth of the game. Alfonso really should have kept that one out, but again, not fuss, man. It's all good. Not an issue for me. I'm fine with this, man. I'm totally fine with this. Uh, I know you're probably thinking about the meme. You know, the meme where the guy's, like, crying aggressively. <laughs> yeah, he's got, like, a mask on with a happy face. That's probably what you think I'm like right now. But honestly, man, I don't care. 6-0, 12-0, not one bit fussed. Sampdoria away Sunday evening. That's the game. That is the game right there. Just above us in the table right now. Haven't been playing badly whatsoever in this area lately. That's the one I'm worried about. We've already exceeded our expectations in this competition by going one round further. So regardless of what would happen tonight, the board would still consider this a successful cup campaign this year. So yeah, just got to put all our eggs in one basket as we aim to pull off the impossible and survive in this area this year. Or Mueller down the right-hand side, tripped by Baragi, but instead keeps the chance alive, and Ruwoko has scored his third of the year. I like this kid a lot, man. That's, that's three goals now. What have we been saying all season long? Other than trust the process. Positive signs. That's what we're looking for. Signs of encouragement this year. And to be fair, this, this Ruwoko kid, out of the academy, three goals this season in five games. Well, six, I believe it will be now. That's that's impressive for an 18-year-old, man. Very impressive. And for reaching the first round, we've got 430000 as well. And when you look at our finances right now, after the sale of Yessi Yorinen, loaning out Scrab once again, and the money we've been getting for gate receipts and TV revenue this year as well, we're up to $20 million in the budget. At the start of the campaign, the start of the series, we had just over five and a half. We've already increased our finances by 15, almost 15 million in the space of seven months. Now that is encouraging. I got money, man. I got money with this pressure side. I got dinero with this pressure side, man. I'm, I'm raising the cash in the bank balance right now. And that's going to be another sale there. And Dodge is off to Benevento. Once again, it's an under sale of just 725 grand for a player that's worth far more than that. But again, gets his salaries off, his salary off the books. That means we only have one foreign player left in the team now. And again, three quarter of a million, or almost three quarter of a million for the guy as well. Finances continue to go up. It's it's all positive here. I don't know who we're going to reinvest that money on. We actually missed out on a centre-back from Juve in the summer because we didn't have the cash at the time. Now we've got around 2 mil, I believe, in our transfer budget now. Yeah, just over 2 million pounds, you'd say, uh, with the wage budget as well. Um, we probably would like to bring at least one more player in because our squad is so thin. But who it is, I don't know yet. I guess I'll have to wait and see what sort of deals are available for some young players. But, um, yeah, to be honest, no. Nah. To be honest, I, um, I, I, I'm fine with the development that our current players are showing right now. 
And as we play through Sunday, you can see the early kickoff is a big one. Bologna at home to Genoa. If Genoa just avoid defeat there, they will go above us. But instead, that means they remain in 90th place. I don't know it wouldn't have done. They would have caught up by a point. But um, either way, who have Cali are you got today? Torino at home. So we could really do a Torino getting a big win there as we aim to keep ourselves above the drop zone in regards to the game against Fiorentina. And yes, Torino got a win there, which means we will still be on the drop zone come the end of the episode, regardless of what happens. And that means at the halfway point, we'll be guaranteed to be outside the bottom three. Never would have predicted this in my wildest dreams at the start of the save, but a win here, going three points clear, and ahead of Sampdoria on the head-to-head -head record as well. That'll be huge. Fours of Brescia. Let's go do it, man. So back to our strongest possible team. And uh, the 3-5-2. Moller in goal. Back five of Martella, Mangravati, Armenia to stand with Sabelli at right wing back. Uh, right now, as you can see, uh, hold on, where is he? Where's Peroli? He's unfit. He's been injured for a while. Uh, midfield trios, Viviani, Bisoli and Tonali. By the way, the reason why I'm playing Sandro as board midfielder and not deep line playmaker or box-to-box -box or Mizala, as some of you guys suggested, is because he's going to be gone at the end of the season. So where he plays isn't really too important to me. I'm more worried about Viviani's development as he's here for the long term. Uh, up top we've got Tori Grosser and Balotelli, he's been our top scorer this year. And on the bench, Alfonso, Gastaldello, uh, Perola, Magri, Semprini, De Sena, Marazzi, Luis Ignoli, Gezi, Rocco, Donnarumma, and Rovaglia as well. Second and final game, huge one, and a chance to go points clear of the bottom three. Forza Brescia. I feel like if Sampdoria win this game, then a gap is going to start developing between the bottom four or, well, three of the bottom four, perhaps, if you don't count Lecce's poor season, and the rest of the teams that are in the bottom half of the table. So a draw in this game would suit us down to the ground. I'd certainly take it. And we just don't want to see Sampdoria pull away, man. And early in the game, I think we're going to wear penalties. So Stana pushes Yankto to the floor, and he's a spot kick, and this will be the worst possible start. Seven minutes in, don't have much faith in my 17-year-old goalkeeper. Sampdoria should go goal up through Fabio Qualiarella. Oh, Marco Moller, the kid, saves it and proves me wrong. Still nil-nil. He's been good this year, Molly, you know. He's, he's developed quite nicely. And some of the saves he's made in some of our games as well have been incredible too. He's only 17. Wait, was he 17 or is he 18 now? I think he's still 17. Yeah, eight, 18 now. Turn 18 on New Year's Day. And um, pulls off heroics to keep us deadlocked. Fair play to the kid. And we are currently still deadlocked as we approach the break. But there is a highlight here. We have five minutes to go until the half as Yankko flicks on. But it's Stan who gave away the spot kick, wins it back. And finds Bissoli. Brescia coming forward down the right. Sabelli, the right wing back, stepping in field. Cross field into Martella. He's been one of our players of the season. Tonali. Ooh. Just wide. I'll take this every day of the week, baby. I'll take this every day of the week. And again, this is why we threw our backup brigade out of the San Siro. No, no. I'm going to say to the boys here. We've been a better team here. Just, no, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say unlucky boys things haven't gone right for us so far. That will motivate a couple. It will individually criticise the defence. Uh, sorry, the attack and the midfield as well to fire them up. Second half begins. I'll, I'll take this point, man. We'll go one point clear in the bottom three. This will be a good result. Long, long, long time to hold on, though. Whole second half to play. Ferrari down the right trying to cross. And it will drop to De Pauli. He gives it him straight back. In goes that ball. And Mola makes a great save on the line of Mangravati. Hooks it away. Marco Moller again, the hero. Still 0 0. This would be a solid result if we can hold on to it, man. About to approach the final 15. What I'm going to do it now is play Tonali's deep line playmaker and take off Viviani and bring on Desena as well to hopefully give Tonali a bit more freedom there to, uh, to not just run around and chase the ball. But still, we are tied. Haven't done much on the offensive, but I'm fine with this. But right on cue, highlight for Brescia. Tori Grossa keeps holding the ball, rolls through Martella. Oh, it's cleared away by Ekdal, but we keep the chance alive. Desena off the bench. <laughs> what a goal! We lead! Trust the process, baby. Pressure in front. Away at Sampdoria. Desena off the bench. Receives it from Sandro. It swivels. What a goal! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do I push the wingbacks back or lead them as they are? I think I'll lead them as they are for now. But this will take us over Sampdoria, and we'll go three points clear. Donnarumma for Torre Grosso, just to burn the clock a little bit here. And I'll make my final change now as we enter stoppage time, just to burn up even more time. Semprini for Sabelli. What I'll do as well is I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll lower the tempo down. And uh, I'm just guessing what I'm doing here, but I'll slow the pace down as much as we can. We'll time waste as well. We'll bring on our third and final sub. Yes! 
Fuck the Tim Cup, baby. That's why we threw the back of Brigade out there. Brescia are three points clear in the bottom three and going to 16th place. Trust the bloody process, baby. This is brilliant. Nobody gives a chance, but you play magnificently. Congratulations. They're saying that I, I can't believe this. We are three points off the drop and moving to 16th place at the halfway point in the Serie A. Extraordinary. Four wins in 19. I believe we're only three points away from avoiding the lowest points total in Serie A history. That looks incredibly unlikely to happen now. And this is amazing, man. Brescia are in 16th. We're just a bloody bunch of kids. Marco Moller the hero in that one. I'm buzzing. Final weekend fixture is Juventus versus Parma. They've won by four goals to one. So now at the official halfway stage, the table looks like this. Atalanta are four points clear of Juve as they look to dethrone them and win the title. The top four is incredibly close in the battle for the Champions League spots right now. But in the bottom three, Lecce, hate to say it, but they are definitely going down. No doubt about it now. We'll probably set the worst points record in Serie A history. Genoa needs to get a move on. Otherwise, they are definitely joining them. But I'd say right now, it's it's Udinese and Cagliari. Udinese to Cagliari right there. That's six teams who are trying to avoid that 18th place spot. And at the moment, we are three points clear of it. And we've got the better head-to-head -head record in Cagliari after beating them earlier on in the campaign as well. The kids at the moment are defying all the odds... And currently, halfway through the season, we're above the drop zone by three points. Absolutely buzzing, baby. Trust the process. Trust the process. But there's a long way to go. But that was this episode of Club and Country, guys. First win on camera. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you did, then please drop a like. Much love to you. Have a great day. And we've got to come back with that Cagliari clash, man. No way can we miss that one. That's at home. And then I think Hellas Verona are away. Or perhaps Napoli are away. I'm not sure which one, but one of the two probably had us for owner away because we've got more chance picking up a point in that game there. Have a great day, though, guys. Much love, and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country where hopefully we're still above the drop zone and have sold our final foreign player in the team very soon. Trust the process, man. This is brilliant.